This is a tiny little speaker that was in the lossly before. <clears throat> it is very small. It's probably only about an 8 inch. So <clears throat> this thing is going to go because this, it just doesn't give enough sound power. And what I'm going to replace it with is this big old monster right here. Look, look at the relative size. <clears throat> so that's going to be a lot better. So what I'm getting ready to do is take this monster and bolt it down. On the inside of the Leslie, I just uh, lube this part right here. That's the axle for the, the baffle. The pulley, the, the drive belt, and you can see where it comes back here to this motor right here. But we do all these connections also. And due to the size of the new speaker, these sides, I'm going to have to uh, take and build those up. I may just leave them on and do a box around the whole unit. Ain't that cool? Yeah. All right, Toads. I have the new speaker installed. There it is right there. Big old monster. And then a little tiny one. I'll put my hand there where you can see the relative size. So quite a bit of difference. Going to be a lot of sound power coming out. And what happens is whenever the electricity hits, that cone is going to be vibrating back and forth and pushing air down into this slot right here. And this uh, is the part that rotates. So the speaker itself doesn't rotate. It's this baffle that does it. Okay, another view of the speaker installed in the box. It sure is big. Just look at the size of that thing. Woohoo! And there's uh, the pulley for the... Well, that's going to be on the high-speed motor, which is the bigger one. Alright, Toads. This is a view of the baffle. That's what, what's going to happen whenever it spins. You can see this, this motor right here is the, the high speed motor. It's kind of large there. And then on top of it, it has a little wheel that uh, the slow speed motor, which is down here, whenever I disengage the high speed, low one that this motor is just going to turn without any electricity because it's going to be driven by this gear assembly right here which I'll show you a different view in a moment but that's what it looks like yeah okay. in a moment I'm going to give you a view of the low speed motor That's a view of the low speed motor right here and it kind of looks like a, a little uh, fan motor. That's what they're generally used for but the thing with this one it has a shaft that's a lot longer and it's going to go up in this assembly where the wheel is located. This is how it's going to be geared down for slow speed. So whenever I go to low speed this one will be fed with the electricity and it's going to start spinning and the shaft is going to uh, go to the side it's going to push to the right and engage in the, in the little uh, wheel right there where the big motor doesn't have any electricity applied so it's going to be just spun by the slow speed this part may be a little difficult to see, but I'm going to take and put my finger on it. You see this right here, where my fingertip is pointed? That's going to be the shaft of the low speed motor. And this right here is the gear. So whenever I engage electricity, this little shaft is going to go up here on the rubber wheel and engage 
and that's how it's going to do the slow speed. And what I'll do is uh, I got a 12 volt relay that on the contacts of it, one side will be for high speed and then the other relay contact will be for low speed. And then I'll feed the coil of the relay with 12 volts hooked up to a foot switch. Now, whenever the foot switch is not uh, being pressed, the low speed is always engaged. That's where it's normally at. And then once I press my foot down on it, the relay will energize and kick in the big motor. And the baffle here will spin very, very fast. So essentially, that, that's all that happens with the Leslie speaker. The part that's so expensive is just getting this combo right here of the slow and, and high speed motors. That's where your expense is. Just these right here is worth probably about $200 long. Yay. Woohoo. So the next thing to do is to build the case around this assembly right here. And then the next part will be to put in the relay and do the wiring for the motors and the foot switch. And then the last thing is do the uh, foot switch and the audio connector going to the keyboard. So the worst part of this construction project is really just uh, you know, finding the pieces of the wood, the plywood that I need to build the enclosure with. But I got plenty of wood. Yeah, I even got some big wood too. Whoopee. Yeah. Well, I looked at my wood supply today and determined that I don't have enough good stuff. So, my project is done for the day. I'll have to go by uh, Home Depot and get some better plywood. I just don't like what I'm looking at. That hole right there where that gear is, the speaker's on the other side and the audio comes down and it hits this baffle and it gets slung out in a circular fashion. Works on the principle of uh, AM and FM and then the Doppler effect is as this thing swings toward you the sound is coming out faster so the pitch is going to be higher and then the normal pitch right about there and then whenever it goes past you the frequency is going to be lower this is the same effect that happens whenever a train comes by you hear uh, three different pitches the normal pitch and then as it approaches slightly higher as it goes way slightly lower and that's what gives you the lustly effect yay isn't that fascinating Hey, you're learning something new, huh, kitties? All right, toads and toadettes. That's about all I'm going to do today. Until I buy some good-looking wood. Yeah. May as well do it right or not do it at all. Bye, toads and toadettes. Yeah.